Amelia Mulhern and also Sophie Sutton. So the four Victorians from New South Wales. We have two riders, Kira Will and also Emily Strumpfen. And we saw both of those riders in the team sprint gold medal from earlier tonight. Queensland had Isabel Cairns. She's very, very strong indeed. So she'll be one to look out for. South Australia with three riders, Sarah Daly, Meg Marker and Elizabeth Green. So this will be really interesting. Lucy Stewart, every time she comes onto the track, craft is what I think of. She's really, she's fast, she's strong, but she just has really good race craft. And Isabel Cairns, she's really strong. This will be a great race. Well, Lucinda Stewart. Lucy, as she's known, she won four gold medals here last year on this velodrome. She comes in uh, absolutely as the hot favourite across the board, I would say. Uh, Scott, everybody's eyes are on her after the performance uh, that she did have last year as a first year. Sophie Ma is not out on track to note after that individual pursuit ride. And I'm not sure if you, you noticed in the uh, interview after the individual pursuit, Scott, that I thought she was talking about uh, alcohol. She said, I just, it, to recover well, I just make, need to make sure I drink a lot. And then she said, paused and said, of water. Um, but after the interview, she said, I'm only 17, Kate. So, yes, stick to the water, Sophie. Plenty of years ahead. I think it'd be legal in Hawaii. I think they have a lower legal age. Pot, is, she, is she headed to Hawaii soon, or is that just a random reference? It's just a, one of those useless trivia things. Welcome to Monday Look it up. Night, Someone everybody. at home can look that up and tell us, actually. I'm not sure. <laughs> 77 laps to go. It's the points race for the under-19 women. And the two names we've mentioned in Stewart and Cairns, two that really do stand out in this one. We'll see how it plays out, though. Now, I did see, speaking of parents, I did see Lucy Stewart's father, Jeff, uh, very briefly, actually, former teammate of mine, the old Jayco Caravans team, for a short stint a long time ago. And Lucy, that was her just swinging up now and going to the very back of the bunch. So she's of the th the three vic well four Victorians. Uh, there are two with white helmets and two with black helmets. Lucy has the black helmet with the disc wheel, so she's running a rear disc wheel. And the other rider from Victoria with the black helmet is not running a disc. So look for that one. Black helmet, rear disc. That's Lucy Stewart. And Isabel Cairns is the only Queenslander out there. We saw those two duking it out earlier in the week. Another strong rider from Queensland. Well, Izzy rides for ARA Pro Cycling. She's the under-19 individual time trial champion. She was third in the road race. Uh, she's a very, very handy climber. If she tries to take a lap, if she's patient and uh, attacks at the right time, she will be very hard to stick with. That's for sure. She's turning 18 soon. She's a second year uh, in the under-19. She also had a great uh, under-19 year on the road last year. But as you uh, spoke about, Scott, they haven't had the opportunity to have their Junior Worlds quite in the way that the other uh, generations have. So they did go to Adelaide and have some national team camps to still give them uh, the opportunity to develop a little bit. But uh, they will be pretty desperate for racing. And there's good and bad to that, I think, because we know from the history of the Junior World Championships, Under-19 World Championships in the past, obviously to stay motivated knowing that you're not going to get to go, that's, that's a challenge, right? So that's the bad, that you don't get to have that motivation. But for a lot of riders, their expectations after Junior Worlds, they take a real knock because they then come back and perhaps then have to race against the elites and it's a real struggle for them. First sprint underway, 71 laps to go. And down the back straight, Meg Marker from South Australia, the first one to pick up the maximum points by the looks of it. Stewart will come through to finish in second place. So five points to Marker, three points will go to Louis, Lucinda Stewart and Izzy Carnes was in the points there as well. So first strike to Meg Marker. She has two teammates there as well. So they're a pretty strong force, the South Australians, as we've seen in all of the women's races, actually. So also three riders here in the under-19 women. A really comfortable second place from Lucy Stewart. Really controlled. She didn't uh, use too much energy to try and win. She was comfortable with that second. Quite often, it's a very good tactic early on in a points race to just pick up some minor points and just keep ticking it away almost letting the other riders wear themselves out going for those big sprints. So very comfortable from her. Also good to see Kira Will, the New South Wales rider, uh, in fourth there. She picks up one point. They have 80 laps 
in total, they've got, they'll come around with 67 to go. It's still a lot, a lot of riding left in this race. Anybody spending too much energy at this point needs to uh, take a deep breath. And I will correct myself, Kate, because I looked at the start list and saw three South Australians, looked at the track and saw two. So there are only two South Australians, so Mick Marker and Elizabeth Green. Unfortunately, Sarah Daly, Daly not taking to the start line. So Marker leads the way on five points. She has one teammate to perhaps try and help her out, but the four jer blue jerseys of, of uh, Victoria really do have an imposing hold on the peloton. So many riders, if they work well together, to try and get Lucinda Stewart the victory. Well, it is a very heavy program, so it's hard for all of the riders to continue backing up uh, for all the events. So we have seen both Sophie Ma and Sarah Daly missing. They're two names you would normally uh, think could definitely uh, be very prominent in this kind of race. But they went gold and silver in the individual pursuit. Sorry, gold and bronze. Uh, and that was quite, quite a big race for them. Doesn't, it's not surprising that they're a bit worn out already at this point in the program. And with Sarah from South Australia on the podium, on the your program itself, I know that's caused a few little issues actually mm. because she didn't take to the start line. And we saw Brianna Hargraves line up in the women's scratch race the other night, which surprised me because she's here as a pure sprinter. And then she rode the first half lap and just pulled out. And she told me that she wasn't supposed to do the scratch race the state manager had entered her in it and because she was on the start list she had to line up um, otherwise risking a fine or relegation from the rest of the competition so that's why she just started and pulled out straight away well i wonder if they've addressed that though scott because there has been a little bit of chitter chatter um i will say as i've been walking around in the center people a little bit discontent with that one they'll come around for another sprint and get the bell 61 laps to go and it's Belinda Bailey on the front for Victoria. Two Victorians in fact and Bailey the first one out of the saddle as she comes down the back straight. Strong rider. I saw her at the uh, Bay Classic Criterium Series earlier in the year at the start of January. She's going to try and hold on for the points here. She's not going to quite do it though. Over the top was Sophie Sutton. So Victoria first and second in that one but it was Sophie Sutton that comes away with the five points. Three points go to Belinda Bailey. A lot of effort there from Belinda Bailey, unfortunately not pulling it off. Quite a noticeable gear difference too. Um, by gear, I don't actually mean the gear ratio, I mean just the wheels actually, the setup there. So uh, Belinda Bailey without a disc wheel or a five spoke or a deep dish even, which is quite different to most of the other riders out on track. And that does make a difference, doesn't it, Scott? They're not just for show, it makes a very functional difference when they're sprinting certainly makes a difference to your bank balance as well. It's the other challenge. They're so expensive now, aren't they? Looking at three to $4,000, perhaps even a tad more for a disc wheel. Haven't seen, seen the price of disc wheels for a long time, actually. Might be used to be standard was around about $4,000. Oh, might be more now. I just assume a lot, Scott. But uh, fair to say that most of the riders are supported by their state teams and state academies uh, and usually not riding their own gear, uh, which is good because even if you did have the budget to fork out for that expensive equipment, a fall and a ruined wheel could uh, be financially very devastating. So they tend to pull those resources uh, and have team equipment. Meg Marker was in the points as well after winning the first sprint. So she was third in the second. She leads overall seven points ahead of Sophie Sutton on five after getting the five points in that second sprint. Lucy Stewart, she sits in equal third on three points with Izzy Cairns and also Belinda Bailey. Kira Will. She's the only other rider with a point, and then one single point, she's in sixth place. Well, she, she could still move up the, uh, the, onto the podium there, Scott. When the, where there's a will, there's a way. Come on now, nothing? Really nothing for that? Oh, Scott, goodness me. Interesting to me, Scott, is that the pace isn't on, but the pace isn't off. They're in this interesting halfway where they are all just rolling around the bottom nobody really particularly wanting to take responsibility to keep it fast this is still pretty ripe for an attack if somebody were to uh, go high and wide and, and uh, really hit them pretty hard when everybody is just ticking along well meg marker she is a fast sprinter and the more they ride around like this 
the more it favours the pure sprinters recovering between each of these efforts. There are 53 laps to go now, and as long as they keep backing off in between all the sprints, Marker might be able to pick up all the maximum points now. An attack coming from Carnes. So Izzy Carnes, I think she looked up and thought it was coming around the bell, but then realised 52 laps to go. So next lap will be the bell. And Carnes is going to find herself lobbed right on the front. Perhaps doesn't want to be right there. And look at all those blue jerseys lining up. Here comes Stewart around the outside. Three wide for the Victorians. Out in the wind. That's going to cost Stewart a little bit of energy as well. Cairns now. One lap to go. It's 51 laps. And here she goes down the back straight. Lucy Stewart, look over the shoulder. She looks comfortable. Wait for the attack to come from... Stewart, here it comes now. A little bit of a flick from Carnes. And Stewart up around the outside. She'll get the five points. Carnes holds on for second. There's Marker again. Might have only been the one point, though. So not a great sprint from the South Australian, the current overall leader. But that was just delightful from Stewart there. The control was sensational. She really uh, never went too far outside her comfort zone. Look at the difference in body language uh, between Carnes and Stewart there. Carnes threw everything into that. She would want to have a good wheel for the next couple of laps because, look, you can even see her shoulders starting to drop. Well, in fact, they're going the opposite direction. It's her head dropping and her shoulders uh, lifting up to almost cuddle her ears in there. Uh, that's kind of when you're that tired, Scott, and you tend to lock out your elbows because you think it will take a little bit less energy. Uh, so I'm definitely watching to see if Carnes can get a bit more recovery here. Uh, she's in a plumb position at the moment, but tides can change very quickly in a points race. They'll come around to get 47 laps to go, and two riders tied at the top, Meg Marker and Lucy Stewart on eight points. Sophie Sutton only one point behind in third place, and Izzy Carnes one point further behind, six points she has in sitting in fourth. So two riders tied after three sprints, both on eight points, Marker and Stewart. And the pace again, Kate, just coming off a little bit as well in between these sprints. So it is becoming a bit of a battle of the sprints. Well, they definitely aren't uh, looking to be too aggressive. We haven't had a single earnest attack at this point. It's quite a small field. Uh, and so I think a lot of the riders are hesitant with still 45 laps left to go to throw too much out there because 45 laps, that's an awfully long way when you are uh, travelling at absolute full speed. Think about the body language we've seen after a three-lap sprint. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot to send you over that red line and they're doing it again and again in a points race. Emily Strumpfen from New South Wales. She's the rider that swung up above the blue band. Stewart comes through, Carnes in second position, then it's Kira Will. Sophie Sutton from Victoria now. She goes through, short turn of pace, swings up as they're all been doing. That's Meg Marker now from South Australia. Likewise, she swings up and gets out of the way. Amelia Mulhern, she's now lobbed on the front, swung off off the front and allowed Belinda Bailey to come through. 43 laps to go, Belinda now swings up and it's the second of the South Australians, Elizabeth Green. It's now sitting on the front. Marker, no one really wanting to go to the front. They're all unwilling to do so, looking across the track to see how many laps it is to go. And just so you know, insight from here, just now the lap scorer clicked over to the laps it is to go. So 42 laps to go. And if you're in the back straight and you look across, so when they come around now, it's 42 laps to go. If you want to be in the back straight and you look across to see how many laps to go it is, it'll still say 42. It's not until they come into the final bend that they click it over to the next lap. It will be the bell this time, so if they look too soon, they might get confused as to how many laps it is to go. It's not so for Belinda Bailey, though. She's gone straight to the front, and Ryder's really trying to close her down. It's Marker down the back straight, trying to come up over the back of Belinda Bailey. Bailey going to try and hold on to pick up some points. Marker definitely comes over the top. She drags Lucy Stewart with her as well. There's another five points to Marker, three points to Lucy Stewart. So first and second in the overall standings in the sprints, and that's allowed Izzy Carnes to go straight on the attack. You said we hadn't had any attacks just yet. They were waiting for a few more sprints to get into the legs before Izzy Carnes was gone on the attack. I think Izzy Carnes definitely has the will to do it, but the body language is telling me she doesn't have the legs tonight uh, to go away. She put so much out uh, in that sprint two sprints ago. 
Let's just take a look at this because really significant. Marker and Stewart went into this sprint on equal points. They are definitely, uh, at the moment, the top two really battling it out. Marker puts in a whole lot of energy. That's number 81 that we're looking at in the red. Lucy Stewart, look at how calm she is, the Victorian 112. She didn't even try and get over the top, but she used so much less energy. Yep, it, she lost two points in that regard to Marker. But given how many sprints we still have to go, I have a feeling we'll see her make that up uh, because it's been an incredibly controlled ride. One of the things we often see with the juniors um, is a lack of patience, and that is not a criticism. It is very hard in a points race, a scratch race, uh, to actually be patient when the race is like this. It's on, it's off. It, fair to say you can actually get a little bit bored out there when it's not really on. You're just waiting, waiting, waiting. It can be a little bit frustrating. So for a young rider in the under-19s to show such patience, that is a very evolved and mature way of riding. Meg Marker, more of a sprint-based rider than Lucy Stewart, and she's done the most so far in the sprints. 13 points, two points now ahead of Lucy Stewart. Izzy Carnes sits in third on eight points ahead of Sophie Sutton and Belinda Bailey. A bit of a gap now starting to open up between fourth and fifth place. Very tight at the top, though. Only those two points from that final, sp that uh, previous sprint that has separated Marker and Stewart. Pace goes off again, which I feel is to the advantage of Meg Marker. She is the quickest in the sprints. I think that's what we can determine. When things go well for her, she is the quicker of the riders out there. So for riders like Lucy Stewart or Izzy Carnes, they need the race to get a little bit harder to put her under pressure. Well, the Victorians have the numbers. So they do have four riders out there with Sophie Sutton, Belinda Bailey and Amelia Mulhern backing up Lucy Stewart. If it comes down uh, to the wire with Meg Marker, I think we can expect to see them all working together. We already are more and more, Scott, because we're seeing the blue colours of the Victorians riding in very close proximity to each other uh, more and more. South Australia, they've only got two. They've got Elizabeth Green is the backup for Meg Marker. Uh, so if the Victorians are smart here, they can certainly put a lot of pressure on the South Australians. Well, Bailey on the front. Stewart has come up to the back wheel or to the shoulder now of Bailey because it'll be a sprint coming around the next time they come. So Lucy Stewart's going to have to go from the front here. Carnes is in second position. Where's Meg Marker? Meg Marker is sort of boxed in there. Third position right in the middle of the bunch. Right up around the outside, though. That's Mulhern from Victoria. Stewart gets in the slipstream now. So she hasn't had to do the full layout to go for the points now. Up around the outside of her fellow Victorian Mulhern. Five points will go now to Lucy Stewart. Marker was there, but not in the big points. So we'll swap lead. Well, swap the lead again. I'm not even sure uh, that Marker will have taken the one point there. Smart riding from the Victorians, but for a moment, it looked as though Mulhern was actually going for the sprint on her own and not, in fact, leading out um, Lucy Stewart. And I thought, what's going on here? We actually need to be a bit more organised. But it played out perfectly uh, where... Mulhern actually was in the position of separating some points. So Carnes uh, took the second place points there, holding on very uh, tightly at the moment to that third place on the podium. And for Marker, that meant she only got one point, uh, which did make that gap now between she and Lucy Stewart. Two points is the difference now. Lucy Stewart goes to 16 and Meg Marker on 14. Izzy Carnes stays in third on 11 points. Only five points from the gold medal for the Queenslander. But Stewart's and Marker certainly have demonstrated that they are a little bit faster in pure speed compared to Izzy Carnes. So she'll need to do something pretty special, the Queenslander, if she's going to give herself anything more than the bronze medal that she sits in at the moment. Now, I understand, Scott, that uh, Meg Marker is actually on loan to South Australia from the Northern Territory, a proud Territorian. So we'll give a shout out to that because we don't have uh, too many representing from the Northern Territory. Historically, actually, um, fair to say they've been reasonably underrepresented. Uh, so we will make sure uh, that we half fly that flag for her uh, out there. But Meg Marker. She looks more comfortable now. She, the last sprint she won, uh, she had to muscle her way to do that. 
the last sprint, she only got one point, but it did allow her a little bit of a chance to uh, sit behind the wheel in a bit of a draft and get a bit of recovery. The body language is much better. She's looking a lot more comfortable. And as you mentioned, she's definitely uh, the swiftest out there. But Carnes and Lucy Stewart both come with exceptional ability to go long. Carnes is the under-19 uh, national time trial champion. Uh, Lucy Stewart, four gold medals on this track at these championships last year. She knows how to win gold medals here, uh, and she's back and pretty motivated and very clearly on good form. The Aussie under-19 crit champion as well. So similar to this race, a little bit longer on the road down there in Sturt Street in Ballarat. 23 laps to go. It is three more sprints in this race, and it's a two-point differential between Lucy Stewart and Meg Marker. 16 and 14 points with Izzy Carnes sitting in third on 11. Sophie Sutton, Sutton still in the mix, though. She sits in fourth place on seven points. And then a little bit of work for Belinda Bailey, Kira Wheel, Amelia Mulhern. They are the rest of the riders that have points. Strumpfen and Green, unfortunately, no points to their tallies just yet. The podium is certainly shaping its way at this point. Marker hits out for this one. 21 laps to go. She needs some points. She's in second place by two. And here comes the, uh, the top three riders now in the first three positions of the peloton as they're coming. Carnes is really pushing Marker up around the outside. They'll come through to get 20 laps to go. And it was really tight between those two. It might have been Carnes just getting up around the outside. I think so she we're just might have come over the top of, there, yes. Talking about the pure speed of Marker, but Carnes really showed some impressive closing speed then. Well, this was to the benefit of Carnes because she had a wheel to chase. So Carnes, it would not be her strength if she was sitting directly behind Marker and trying to pop around the outside. But she had something to chase, and she's got a bit of fight in her, Izzy Carnes. Oh, that was close. That was very, very close. They've too. given it to Izzy. Izzy Carnes on the outside. So she has picked up the five points. And that has put Lucy Stewart in her placing. Still in first, but only one point ahead of Marker. And then two points ahead of Khan. So first, second and third, 18, 17 and 16 points with two sprints remaining. Super tight between the top three. And I've ridden for all three states, so I'm not sure who to barrack for. <laughs> choose one now, Scott. I think that's the rule. I'm going for I'll Queensland. I'll choose the winner. I'll choose the winner. <laughs> My partner and I have a house just down the road where, you know, I'm transitioning into full Queenslander uh, over here, Scott. So I'm going to go Queensland. Unless Kira Will gets up and then I'm, you know, back to New South Wales. It's not too big a transition from you coming from, from Sydney because it's still NRL territory. Whereas if you're from Victoria, oh, it's a yes, massive transition because you're moving from AFL territory up to NRL. No disrespect to the rugby fans either, though. Oh, what about the Gold Coast Suns? They do have a team up here, Scott. Well, they do. Well, they've got two. two Brisbane Lions. Yeah. The Gabba's not too far Fitzroy. away. They Let's were not. Fitzroy back in the day. <laughs> but yes, point taken. 15 laps to go, super tight at the top. So this could be anyone's now. Three very different riders in Lucy Stewart, Meg Marker and Izzy Carnes. And Sophie Sutton remains in fourth place on eight points. A rider has gone down. It's not, it's a South Australian, but not Meg, Meg Marker. It so like it's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Green. Green. So unfortunately, Clipper wheels and Elizabeth Green has gone down. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Every time we're hearing a noise now, Scott, we're a bit jumpy after the uh, the first night. There were a few incidents. Uh, now, they're not neutralising it. Uh, hopefully, we will be able to see Elizabeth Green um, back up. I'm not sure if she'll be back up on the bike, um, but the medical staff are out there at the moment. The riders are looking around a bit, not quite sure if they'll be going on with this or not, Scott. That's a hard position to be in for the riders. Well, 13 laps to go. You can see the bike and the rider not on the track surface itself, not on the light blue band, which is the duckboard. Um, but she hasn't been able to shuffle across to get a little bit further out of the way, which would be ideal. We'll just see now if they count down. They are. So they are counting down the laps, down to 12 laps to go now. The race is continuing. They're just keeping an eye on the situation with Elizabeth Green to make sure she's OK. She's moving, conscious, so that's a good sign. 
and they will come around to get the bell next time round. Penultimate sprint coming up, super tight between the top three, Stuart, Marker and Carnes. It's Victoria, South Australia and Queensland. And here we go, 11 laps to go. And it's Meg Marker that's leading the way. On the outside is Lucy Stewart. There's Izzy Carnes on the inside. So Carnes muscles her way into second position. But it was a pretty cruisy couple of laps. That could be to the advantage of Meg Marker. Has she freshened up enough to get the points in this one? It looks like she might, but here comes Carnes over the top. Holds on this time on the inside. So the same sprint as what we saw last time, but this time Meg Marker was able to hold on to get the maximum points. That'll put her back into the lead. That was a good sprint between those pair. The rider that I want to point out, Scott, is number 112, uh, Lucy Stewart. And now if you're watching that sprint, you'll notice she's just sitting in third. She does not use her horsepower because we've seen her accelerate past. Uh, at this point, she backs it off a little bit. It's double points coming up. They've, they'll come around with nine laps to go, but when they get the bell, it is double points. Any of those top three, Meg Marker is currently leading on 22 points, Lucinda Stewart on 20, Isabel Khan's on 19, but anybody can win. And I have seen a yellow flag be given as a warning to Izzy Khan's. So I just saw uh, Tony Tor, the Chief Commissaire, hold up a yellow flag and the race number... 53. So Izzy Carnes getting a warning for perhaps rough riding then, and I would imagine it was unintentional if that was the case, but uh, Izzy Carnes on a warning. She needs to be careful oh, to not infringe. I think she's got pretty sharp elbows and a, and a little bit of sass, Scott. I'd encourage it. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, she might say it's by accident, but I'm not too sure. I think it's kind of savvy. There's a very close line, isn't there, between uh, getting a warning and actually riding quite savvy. Now, Talon Cook actually got a warning uh, in the elimination in the under-19 men too. So it, it seems to me like uh, the commissaires are not letting them get away with anything. Everybody is on notice. Six laps to go. Well, five and a half as they come down the back straight now. And Meg Marker leads the way on 22 points. Lucy Stewart in the silver medal position on 20. Then it's Izzy Carnes with that warning, sitting in bronze on 19 points. This is still anyone's race between those top three. It's going to be a real battle with five laps to go in this final sprint as to who is going to come out on the top spot. Meg Marker with a two-point buffer. It's not much. You'd want a little bit more than that, but it's not a super long points race, so it's hard to get a big lead over these riders. It really is, and, and when it is only 80 laps like this, this final sprint with double points is so heavily weighted and of such significance that truly, at this point, any of those top three can win. Sophie Sutton could get herself onto the podium uh, if Khan, if she won and Khans didn't get uh, a point. But we are looking for Marker, Stewart and Khans, number 81, number 112, number 53 and three laps to go. This is, I've got a theory on all of them, on, on how all of them can win. But I think that Lucinda Stewart has been sitting back and just waiting. They'll come around to get two laps to go. Forget about everything that's already happened. It comes down to this final sprint and two laps to go. Victoria come through to lead the way. Amelia Mulhern, right on her wheel is Izzy Carnes from Queensland. And a big move coming from right behind with Belinda Bailey trying to pick up some points as well. She sits in fifth place on three points. But Carnes is, is able to get onto the wheel. Lucy Stewart's trying to come over the top of her. Bailey leads into the final lap. A real fight, though, between Queensland and Victoria with Izzy Carnes coming up around the outside. Lucy Stewart's in second position. Still a lot of track to go to get to the finish line. High on the track is Stewart trying to come up over the top of Carnes. Carnes might not. No, she can't hold on. Lucy Stewart comes through to get the final sprint. That's the double points for her. That will give her the national title. That a girl. I could see, I could just see her in that penultimate sprint, Scott, just backing off that tiny little bit. That can make the massive difference and sensational help from her teammate there in Bailey. Belinda Bailey just setting it up perfectly. Izzy Carnes, I would normally say that she's time trialist, very good sprinter, a um, very good climber, but this sprint is sensational. Lucy, she, she got there, but only barely, Scott. That wasn't by any means an easy one. 
We can see the slipstream with Bailey. I'm not sure she was actually trying to help out Lucy and rather go for the points herself, but it did set Izzy Khan's up well to get into the slipstream. It was just the superior speed of Lucy Stewart to be able to get around the outside. All came down to the final sprint. Third across the line, Meg Marker. She went into that race, into that final sprint in the overall lead with a two-point buffer. Unfortunately for her, was not able to get the job done. So Lucy Stewart came away with 30 points, and it was a four-point buffer back to Meg Marker in silver. Good ride by Izzy Khan, so 25 points for her in bronze. Izzy Khan's fairly scrappy ride there. Like, she was really throwing everything at the bike by the end there, but she did keep going. A little bit unlucky almost to not take that silver uh, after that performance in the final sprint. But absolute uh, credit to Lucinda Stewart. Very, very controlled ride. Very mature ride. Uh, she'll be doing that in the Elite next year. I can see her really battling for the overall if she keeps this up. Just uh, carrying some war wounds there from a crash earlier in the competition. And every time Lucy comes onto the track, we always talk about her tactical now. She has really good race craft. And she really needed that. It was such a good competition between Meg Marker, Izzy Carnes and Lucy that she really needed to use all of that craft to come away with that final sprint win to get the overall victory in the under-19 women's points race. So well done to both Marker and Carnes and good on Belinda Bailey for having a crack as well, trying to go for those final points. The points races are just absolutely cracker this week. We've got the uh, Omnium final coming up for the under-19 men. That finishes with a points race. Their points race the other night is one of the best we've watched, so I'm pretty excited that we kind of get another go uh, of those guys. Can Cam Rogers outdo Tyler Tomkinson? Can they turn it around? Can they do enough to get back onto the podium? Uh, there's a lot of action and excitement coming up there. And I mentioned Lucy's father, Jeff, before there was Jeff just grabbing uh, Lucy's bike coming off the track just then on the back side of the, tr the velodrome here, the enemy's velodrome on the front side coming up to the start line. It's the second race in the sprint for the under-19 men for the Battle of the Bronze Medal. And this is Jaden Stanton Kerr from New South Wales with the job to do. Dylan Stanton from South Australia got the first race win. He wins this one, and it's the bronze medal. So Jaden would have been talking to Sean Eady, the state coach of New South Wales, to try and come up with some tactics. They're pretty evenly matched in overall speed. How can we get the better of Stanton and go for the make it at least go to a best of three? And the biggest difference in that first round was Stanton Road with such confidence. They roll off the line. Stanton Kerr has to maintain the lead for the first half lap unless Stanton uh, wants to snatch it out of his hands. But so far tonight, we've seen that Stanton prefers to go uh, from the back. That is his happy place. We might see a little bit of stalling coming up here, Scott, because Stanton Kerr also, I think, is feeling that he has more confidence if he can ride from the back. You're in a bit of a, bit of a pickle when that happens, when you would feel a lot more comfortable uh, riding your own race and being able to control it that way, but you're not quite able to do that. They can't do track stands anymore, so we won't see them uh, hanging out by the fence. They do have to uh, move faster than the walking commissaire. That is the slowest pace they're allowed to go. I have an opinion on that as well, but I won't offer it because I know the commissaires that are here it's are getting it's some it feedback. <laughs> uh, it is <laughs> unlike you to not offer your uh, well, opinion, Scott. I feel like it may come out in between the rounds. Perhaps. No, I am friends with the, the many of the race officials. I work with them in so many different capacities, but uh, I know they did mention that some of the commentary was getting fed back to them on some of our opinions of decisions, etc. Um, hey, but that's what we're here for, to give our view on how things are going. And at the moment, we're... Bit of big move from Stanton. If he wins this, it's the bronze medal, and he's gone and gone early. He's going to go all the way from here. One lap to go. I'm not sure exactly what Jaden Stanton Kerr was thinking from New South Wales because the gap has absolutely blown out. And Dylan Stanton, you can put it in the book now because he's going to get the bronze medal. Good initiative from the youngster from South Australia. He saw Jaden just ease a bit too much with only three quarters of a lap to go to get to, to the bell and thought, OK, if you're going to go this slow, I'm out of here. See you, buddy. In the semi-finals, he was riding 
at 30% of this in terms of his swagger and his confidence. I love it. He's come out on track for this bronze medal that first round he rode with so much confidence. Uh, and that second one as well, sensational riding from him, really well earned uh, bronze medal. In a moment, we will see the riders come out for the gold and silver medal, Scott. Now, really interesting uh, to remember the different styles of riders. But take a look at it. He just completely missed the boat. Stanton Kerr, he just, and it was all over. In that moment, he did valiantly fight, perhaps thinking uh, that he might close down some distance. He did not even close down a metre. At that point, I think he was thinking that maybe there's a chance that the roof will open up and he'll get struck by lightning. It was <laughs> the only way he was going to get... Hole. The only way he was going <laughs> to gain the win over Stanton in that case. So good tactical riding from young Dylan Stanton. Uh, not quite can be said for Jaden Stanton Kerr, but hey, he's fourth in the national championship, so a good ride to get to this point anyway. This is now the race for gold. Staring competition between the two young guns, Ryan Elliott from Queensland on the top of the track, and Maxwell Liebknecht from South Australia. I like to see that attitude. Well, Elliott rode very, very well in that first round. Liebknecht executed in the exact same way as he executed in the semi-final, but it didn't work in nearly the same way. Very different riders, uh, Elliot versus Stanton. I hope that he is going to completely change his tactics here, uh, Scott, because he needs to. Elliot is riding with such confidence uh, and comfort on his home track that Liebknecht needs to pull something out to s surprise him. There's some speed on very early here. So Max, happy to go fast from the front. Ryan Elliott, high on the track in second position. Now coming down to the belt. So Maxwell Liebknecht, back up again, trying to stay up high. And just as Ryan Elliott was coming towards him, Liebknecht dives down the track. But look at the speed of the Queenslander, the fastest qualifier, straight up around the outside. And Queensland has a new sprinting sensation. It's Ryan Elliott, the youngster, is the under-19 national sprint champion. Such confidence. He just knows how to ride this track and ultimately uh, he did have a bit more speed. There was less than a tenth of a second separating them uh, in their sprint qualification. But you can see here when he moves, when he sits down to accelerate is where he just blows the doors. Ooh, that was a curious little hand from Lee Knish. I think it was probably unjustified to be honest. No, I think it was just a, a recognition oh, of a faster... Do you think? Because yeah. I, I took that as a bit of a like, come on dude. I mean, you know, maybe I've been in Sydney with road rage too much. Because yeah, they're shaking have. hands. Now, have. Look at that it bias was, I was, bring. I saw that as clearly uh, <laughs> well, have a look at this okay, guy. Okay, well there you go. I was like, yep. come on dude, what are you complaining about? But I think you might have called that right, You guys Scott. need to learn how to merge better in traffic down there and just bring the anger down a little bit. Oh, perhaps. look, don't even talk to me about hook turns in Victoria, Scott. I think that... Uh, You've got some explaining to do there. Now, yeah, did you if, if you don't want to take on a tram in the middle of the CBD, you'll do a hook <laughs> do turn, a hook otherwise turn. you'll get sideswiped. Um, tell us about your opinion on the uh, track standing in the sprint. Well, it's taking away a bit of a bit of the history and the character of the event itself. It's like saying um, Paris-Roubaix is really challenging because the the cobblestone roads are too narrow and it's hard to get the cars through. It's a little bit dangerous, so we just won't have cobbles anymore. No, they're going to cement it. That's what cement I heard. It, smooth it, widen yeah, it as well, make yeah. it wider. So it's so I think just taming things down a little bit. Tarmac. It's the same with the Kieran Racing. Three laps to go, the bike comes off now. You draw for your positions. You're not allowed to fight for position once you come off the start line. They have sanitised it far too much for my liking. And I'm not to say I want aggressive racing, but just allow the more tactical astute riders to have some kind of advantage over riders that might be faster than them. Okay. Otherwise, paint more lanes on the track and tell them you can't leave your lane. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you want aggressive racing, actually, Scott. Like, it literally is the backbone and the history of track cycling. They do need to be respectful uh, and not just egregiously throw headbutts out and, and sharp elbows. But I do think a little bit of argy-bargy. We used to say that all the time, argy-bargy. Now you only say that there isn't any, and that is a bit of a bummer. And track stand is an argy-bargy, is it? It's just a tactical exactly, manoeuvre from the yes. rider in first position that wants to try and force perhaps a less skilled rider to go into the front. That That's one all it I is. genuinely cannot understand where that rule comes from. Um, it's not the commissaire's fault for enforcing it, though. 
We're on to the Elite Men's Team Sprint. This is the race for the bronze medal between Victoria and Queensland. New South Wales will be racing against South Australia for the gold and silver medals. And the faster of the two teams in the early rounds was Victoria.